Well, uh, I really enjoy best books of the year lists to remind me about books that I've been meaning to read and to tip me off about books that I haven't even heard of before. And this list that I just came across has both. Uh, it's in British Vogue. It's their 14 best books of 2024 so far. And I know, I know it is very early on in the year to have a list like this, but I can't resist looking through it uh, to see what I've read. And I've not read any of these books yet. <laughs> well, I've read part of one of them, uh, but when I get to talking about that, I'll discuss um, why I've only read part of it so far. And so I thought it'd be fun to, to look through and uh, discuss these books and whether I want to read them or not, and ask whether you have read any of these books, and if you agree, um, if these are books that I should really get around to, to reading, I'd love to hear about that in the, the comments below. Or if you want to let me know about the best books you have read so far on this this year, um, please let me know about that. And uh, the, the editors say in their introduction that this is uh, a very idiosyncratic, very curated um, list of books um, just based on what uh, this group of editors um, have read and that they consider to be really great and might not be some of the most prominent books that are coming out, but ones that they think are really worthwhile. It's a mixture of uh, fiction and memoirs, and uh, a lot of them sound really interesting. Um, so to start off, there is Kylie Reed's um, novel called Come and Get It. And I have been flip-flopping about this book um, ever since. I mean, when it fir I first heard uh, about it, um, I was so excited about it um, because I loved her debut novel. But then um, when I went after it came out and I went on and looked at a, a number of uh, online reviews, and there were many which were quite critical of it. Um, it's a fairly long book and, and some we're saying that is quite tedious to, to get through. Um, it, it revolves uh, around a uh, university campus and following uh, a number of academics and students and uh, the real inequities that exist on campuses like this um, to, to do with um, many different things of, of class and um, race. And um, yeah, so looking at all of these different levels and um, how they all like come together in this academic environment. And that does sound really interesting interesting. And more recently, I've been seeing um, some more positive reviews of it. And it's been, you know, popping up on lists like this. And so, yeah, I um, I might give it a chance. <laughs> Change by Edouard Louis. And uh, this is another author that I, I'm kind of uncertain if I want to read any of his new books, because I did absolutely love uh, his debut, The End of Eddie. Uh, it's this beautiful exploration of a uh, young gay boy in rural France um, from a working class family and um, his struggles to reinvent himself. And this book is uh, continuing um, with that of, of uh, an examination of his life, especially now that he's become a liber literary celebrity and um, and how he is dealing with that and how he reinvented himself and how he's reconciling his past with his present. Um, but I'd read uh, his, another book of his um, called Who Killed My Father, which felt very, um, very like surface level of um, a lot of the uh, complex issues to do with class that it was um, that it was handling it was just kind of um, sort of brushing over a, a lot of that and there were some sections of it which had a lot of emotional resonance but which I felt like I'd already read in his debut novels so I, I sort of felt like is this an author that's just sort of kind of returning the same material in, in different books. Um, I don't know, if, if you've read this book, I'd love to know what you think about it. Splinters, a memoir by Leslie Jameson. Uh, this is looking at the author's life and how experiences of motherhood and a uh, marriage which breaks up um, are these traumatic events um, which caused her to feel like her life had like splintered in these different ways that it was it was fractured in some uh, essential way and so it's this real deep examination um, of that experience um it sounds fascinating grief is for people by sloan crosley this is another memoir that i've been meaning to to read in that it explores um a short period in the author's life um when her apartment was burgled but also she lost one of her 
her closest friends um, that he died. And um, so it's exploring um, the, the feelings of, of grief that result um, from uh, these um, traumatic experiences, um, but also mixes in wit and humor um, with the, ex this larger examination of grief. Private Equity by Carrie Sun, uh, another memoir which is looking at the author's experiences uh, being a, a personal and professional secretary to a very powerful CEO and uh, the demands and the privileges that come along with a position like this and how the author examines um, her own position in uh, this capitalist world. Clear by Karis Davies. Um, this is a short, very short novel, but it's one that I've been reading for quite a while uh, because I've been reading it aloud um, to my husband in its entirety and we just haven't found um, enough time to um, continue on reading it, um, but I've been really enjoying it, um, especially because the language of this novel is so beautiful that to, to read it aloud, um, it really comes alive. And it's such an atmospheric book because it's set on a remote uh, Scottish island in the 1840s as an impoverished minister travels to this island um, to let one of the inhabitants know that his land is being reclaimed and to try to convince him to move away. And it's about that clash. And, um, and it's so powerful how it shows shows the way that uh, these characters are caught within a greater movement of history, but it, it, it evokes their personal stories in such a beautiful way. So I am loving this and want to continue on with it, but also want to also need to find the time to continue on reading it aloud. Memory Piece by Lisa Ko. Uh, this sounds like such a good novel following uh, the friendship of three Asian American women over a period of decades uh, from uh, the 1980s um, when they first meet and um, how they go on to have different professional success. Um, one as an artist, one as a coder of the internet, and uh, one as an activist. Um, but also the frustrations and um, blocks that they find um, along the way um, trying to achieve what they, they want to. And uh, it follows them um, into the, the future. And so examining these individuals um, pitted up against the larger society, uh, I think it sounds absolutely fascinating. Help Wanted by Adele Waldman. This is a novel set in upstate New York in a box store where uh, many different kinds of boxed goods um, travel through this building um, being delivered to different people that have purchased them and it follows the, the workers um, in this building um, over the course of a, a night as they are shifting these boxes around and um, the strange goods that they find in these boxes. And I'm really curious to read this because I had a very short experience of uh, when I was trying to find, desperately trying to find work at one point, um, I was offered a job at a uh, building such as this of like in the middle of the night moving goods around um, these big boxed goods um, around a big huge warehouse but I did not last very long at this at all um, partly because I wasn't accustomed to staying up all night especially doing physical labor late at night um, so I had to leave early um, on one day because I, I just I, I felt like I was about to collapse and it was starting to feel really dangerous like a, a huge box might just like collapse on tops of top of me because I, I couldn't handle moving things around in the middle of the night. So yeah, it's it's um it's so pernicious somehow um, there's this industry and I'm really interested to see um how this is ex examined in a fictional context. Rebel Girl by Kathleen Hanna. This is a memoir uh, by a musician uh, who was the front woman of the band Bikini Kill um who I had experience of because when I was a teenager I uh, had loads and loads of pen pals um from all over the world that I would write to you. And this is showing my age. Um, but um, with some of these pen pals, we would send each other mixtapes of music. And uh, I was sent a mixtape that had uh, the Bikini Kill um, song, Rebel Girl. Rebel Girl! Rebel Girl! <laughs> and I loved it. And uh, so, yeah, I'd be so fascinated to read about um, her experiences in the music industry and um, the, the sexism that she um, encountered there and uh, about her experience 
experiences um, being a feminist and a, a punk rock star. Wives Like Us by Plum Sykes. Uh, this is described as an Austin-esque novel, but uh, for our modern times, I'm following a, a number of women in uh, rural England, upper class rural England, um, who are all married, but uh, also might be looking out for husband number two and um, their different uh, modern experiences with um, like being um, online influencers and, um, and yeah, kind of navigating um, the, this, uh, this rarefied world. All Fours, uh, this is a new novel by Miranda July and uh, it's not out till mid-May. I'm here in the UK, uh, but I've been sent uh, an advanced copy of it, and I'm so eager to read this novel because I am a big Miranda July fan. I've uh, really enjoyed reading her fiction. Is enjoyed the right word? Just, yeah, enjoyed reading her fiction and watching her films and uh, her extreme quirkiness, which I know um, some people feels like a bit too much to take, but, uh, but I really enjoy it as this kind of absurdist like blend of, of humor and angst and um and this novel um follows a a woman who uh, is married who's semi famous um who's uh, has a child and who's between projects and is having this kind of midlife crisis um so embarks upon this road trip um across uh, america to to prove that she can still have adventures um but it turns out i don't think she gets very far um, and and it's um about her experiences of that i i love how um I heard Miranda July um, describe in an interview once how um, she really likes the experience of moving between um, writing fiction, writing books, and um, and creating films, and that she um, really wants to continue moving back and forth between those different projects. And she seems to be following that trajectory um, fairly well. I mean, I, I know a lot of artists will say things like this, but they don't actually follow through with it. Like I remember um, Beyonce once in an interview, you know, said that. Um, early on in her uh, solo career that um, she wanted to make a solo album and then go back and make another Destiny's Child album and keep moving back and forth between being a group and um, being a solo artist. Um, but she's uh, just sort of stuck to being a solo artist since she became queen of the world and who can blame her? <laughs> anyway, that is a, a tangent. Uh, the next novel is uh, This Strange Eventful History by Claire Massoud, another novel that's not out till later in May. Uh, but which sounds really good. Uh, it's a multi-generational story um, spanning 70 years and following a uh, family uh, as they travel uh, and live in different parts of the world and how their personal experiences intersect with um, the larger history which is occurring uh, around them. And I just adore stories like this. The Memo by Rachel Dodes and Lauren Mechlin. Uh, this is a novel, I'm always curious when uh, there's a novel which uh, has two authors to it. Like, how did they go about uh, writing this book? But it follows a woman um, who has settled down to work in a nonprofit organization, um, but she starts to wonder what her life would have been like if she had chosen uh, different paths at different points in her life, like a lot of us do. Uh, but when a supernatural occurrence uh, happens, um, she's able to explore some of these alternative paths paths in life. Um, so it sounds interesting. I'm not sure it would be a book for me. And finally, there is Women and Children First by Alina Grabowski. Um, this novel isn't actually out uh, until July. I'm here in the, the UK, but this is a book which is right up my alley. Um, it's set in a New England town. Um, I'm originally from New England and uh, following a number of different women in individual stories stories, um, but um, how their lives link together. Um, there's a, a sort of central mystery about a, a teenage girl who has died, but it's more uh, creating a picture of their individual experiences and struggles and how their lives brush up against each other. And I just think that sounds so good. So I'm really looking forward to
to reading this and a number of these other books on the list. But like I said, um, let me know if you've read any of these books uh, or if you're interested in reading any of them now or if you want to let me know about some of your favorite reads of this year so far. And like I said, they're going to continue to add on to this list um, as the, the year goes on. So it'll be fun to check back every once in a while um, to see what they have added to the list. But I hope you're doing well and reading good things. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.